Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Sometimes inspiration hits you when you least expect it. And that happened to me today. As I was walking around the supermarket, I overheard a snippet of conversation about somebody, with two old ladies were talking about something. Um, they were talking about the future and, and I kind of misheard what one of them said and, and I could have sworn um, they said um, something about the future and she said no no that was yesterday and I thought what a cool phrase or quote that would be for an art journal page the future was yesterday cool so that got me to thinking about what kind of colours that I would have in an art journal page with a quote like that and I thought well it would have to be kind of browns and neutrals and sepias and craft and I haven't used a page in my Dina Wakely journal one of the craft pages in my Dina Wakely, Dina Wakely journal for quite some time so I thought I'm going to go home and I'm going to sit down open up a double page spread in my Dina Wakely journal and I'm going to have a go on a craft page and create an art journal page with that phrase the future was yesterday as its main focal point maybe throw in a few or one or two other little bits of imagery in there too and just see what I can come up with so I'm going to turn over to my overhead camera and we're going to have a play or I'm going to have a play and you're going to watch so I found a Dina Wakely double page spread craft I've had to pry the pages open because they were stuck this uh, is the stitching I'll just turn over the big light on um, this is the stitch in between the signatures in the journal. So I'm going to utilize the double page spread as best I can um, and put in, um, try and build up my art journal page on this. Now I've pulled out of my um, indigo blue paint pot collection, two browns. I've got one called Warm Tan. This is from the portrait, actually, yeah, that's from the portrait range. So the indigo blue junk and disorderly portrait range of paints. So that's warm tan. Uh, this is their primary range. I say primary, I mean basic range. This is brown hot cocoa. And I've also got, just to add a little bit of colour into it, I've pulled out um, from their um, matte acrylic paint range, the townhouse teal. I'm hoping that the lights aren't too bright on this today because I'm getting a little bit of well, a bit of glare from the camera, so and it is playing up a little bit the camera. So that's the townhouse teal, which is a really nice kind of accent colour, almost a patina colour. And um, I've got some white gesso as well from the indigo blue um, gesso. So the, the I can't speak today. White gesso from indigo blue. There, I've said it. And I've also got some structure paste. Now this is from another British company called Imagination Crafts. Um, I've only ever used this once before. This was a gift. Um, this was gifted to me by my friend Linda, Linda Simpson. Uh, and I've only ever used this the once. Uh, Linda's on the design team for Imagination Crafts. I think she's still on the design team for Imagination Crafts. I hope so. Anyway, um, right, so white gesso. I um, haven't got a total clear picture in my head about what I want to achieve. I just know uh, what colours I want to use and um, the phrase that I'm going to add to the dark journal page um, and some kind of um, brown, grungy, sepia toned um, kind of focal points. I'm just hoping my water's not going to be too dirty for this page today. I need to change my water more often, but hey ho. It's a grunge page, so I'm going to put some white gesso. It's coming out a little bit grey, but that's okay. It's just off-white then, isn't it? Gesso's gesso. I'm going to spritz and spray on this anyway. I'll add some um, like I said, texture paste. And I'm not particularly bothered about getting a complete even coverage. I want it to be a bit scrappy, a bit uneven, because that's what we likes. All uneven and scrappy. Particularly when we're just going for it. 
not really having a total clue about what it is we want. The black that's coming off the brush is from the previous art journal page that I did with black gesso. Obviously I haven't cleaned the brush properly but it all adds to the rich tapestry of strangeness that is my art journal pages. Okay, so that's the white gesso. Obviously, need to get that dry. So I'm going to dry this, I'm going to change the water and then I'll be back. Gesso is now dry. I'm getting a little bit of bleed through from the previous page, which obviously soaked right the way through when I use the dilutions or spritz and sprays on that one, it's actually come through the craft card, but it doesn't really matter. So at this stage I'm going to add in some um, some structure paste. Now this is the stencil called Specimen from TCW. There you go, I quite like this kind of effect you've got going on here, that's very very tenuous, almost snapped off that. Maybe time to replace, but hey ho. So I've got my structure paste and a spatula. I haven't used structure paste on an art journal page for ages. So I'm going to drag that down. And then just lift it off. And then do it again down here, so it's across the page. Don't mind it being a bit scrappy. Uh, and again, a little bit more up here. will do. Right, okay, so stencil needs cleaning, spatula needs cleaning before it dries because otherwise it'll go rock hard and I won't be able to use it again and that needs to dry which means heat gun. So that means five to ten minutes drying time but I won't keep you waiting. I will join you when it's done. Okay, so it's been about ten minutes. I have been and cleaned my water and all my brushes. So I'm ready to carry on. This has had a good 10-15 minutes or so of drying time plus a little bit of heat gun on it. So time to add some colour. So hot cocoa. Indigo blue hot cocoa. Just bear with me two seconds. Phone's ringing. Apologies for that. Yes the phone started ringing which is on silent but I knew who it was from um, and it's to do with the house sale so I had to answer it so I do apologise. Anyway right so I'm just going to take some of that paint from the lid and I'm going to add it just towards the top of the page and just drag it down over the top of the texture paste. And you're thinking, well you're just painting over it now. Yeah, but it is structure paste. But, <laughs> he says, I'm going to spritz it with water. So we're going to loosen up that paint let it sit for a second and then I'm going to grab my cloth. I've got a drips and splats cloth. Just lift that up and then let that run and I can sit that on the page then and direct the water jets down the page Most of it down the page. There we go. 
can see where it's gathered at the top there inside the structure paste and every time you run it down it's going to gather in all the small or lower areas because water obviously tries to find its own level so just lift that cloth up a little bit of a run off there and then I'm going to give that a blast with the heat gun Okay, so that is all now dry, so I'm now going to bring in that lighter shade of tan, the warm tan that I mentioned earlier, and then I'm going to take that and paint that along the bottom. Like so. And then I'm going to repeat the process. This time I'm going to turn the journal upside down and get that warm tan to run down that way. So turn the journal around, grab my cloth, just lay that down first. It's a tad messy, but. I'm hoping it'll be worth it in the long run. Just keep spritzing until the paint starts moving. I'm starting to run out of water. That's fine. I've got another big bottle over here. I'll use this one instead. This might be a little bit stronger with the jets. down a little bit and back again okay turn that round And I get the heat gun back on. Well, that took some drying. That was at least a quarter of an hour's drying time just to get rid of all that water. So, but I've said before, art journal pages with lots of stuff on, lots of paint on, normally do take um, more time to dry than they do to actually to create. So just on that, um, I just want to add a little bit more texture into the background on this before I do anything else. I want to say texture, I mean just a little bit more layering. So this time I'm just going to take um, a little brush to get some more of that hot cocoa, the indigo blue hot cocoa, and just add some of that to my palette there. And take some of the water. Now, as that starts to separate, you can start to see some of the reddish and orangey tones coming through. Kind of nice sepia tones. Which is kind of what this art journal page is all about. And I'm going to get my fan brush. And I'm going to start adding some splats into those areas. Bigger drips. Just like old foxed paper. And that's it. So again, I want them dry before I do anything else. More drying time. Right, my splatters are now dry. So I've pulled out from my collection, um, this is a stamp from Indigo Blue, it seems almost almost all indigo blue today. Um, there's this kind of 
blueprint stamp here, which came on the Draftsman set, um, which I've added to, or popped it onto an acrylic block. Um, and I've also got one of the new Archival Ink um, stamps from Tim Holtz, so Ground Espresso, I think. So these are the Distress Colours, but in an Archival Ink. So Ground Espresso, I think, is going to be the colour. And Archival means, of course, permanent when dry. So I'm going to stamp that down there, just in that background. And I shouldn't be patting this in midair. There'll be lots of people out there going, no! But hey ho. I'm going to put it there. All starting to come together. Turn it round. Do it there. Just so you can see what I'm doing. Bit up there. And then I'm going to do a little bit more just here. That's cool. I think maybe a little bit of ghosting just there. And then just a little bit across the middle, just to kind of join the two pages together. Okay. Like that. Stamp can go away, ink can go away. And then I'm ready, I think, to add my focal point. So I shall be back in two minutes when I've gone and printed it off the computer. Okay, so I've got from an old dictionary, you're probably not going to be able to see that, I've got the word robot on that strip there. And on this one, I've got um, automaton but automatic and automate as well, and automation, which I think is going to be perfect for what I want, because I've also printed off um, like a blueprint of a kind of stylized robot. And I've, I've kind of torn it all the way out. I left one corner or one side, just so you could see me doing it. Because you know what it's like, you just automatically go into autopilot, which is quite funny considering what I'm doing. Um, and I've also printed off my two phrases, or the phrase, so the future was yesterday, which is what we said we were going to do, or I said I was going to do. So before I go any further, I want to grunge up and distress up the edges. So I've got Vintage Photo Archival Ink, and I've got my little, fun, my little spongy, daubery kind of thing. And I'm just going to go around the edges just to distress all four of those, even though some of them will be disappearing, probably, maybe, don't know yet, because that's the thing when you're doing stuff on the fly, you don't really know. I might just lay these over the top yet. Right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do the phrase as well, so it's a bit boring for you to just sit there watching me do a repetitive process like this. So I'll carry on and then I'll join you again when I've done all four bits. Promise, Gov. On five, four. Okay, got my glue. So I've got Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua, see-through one, not the white one. So there's the robot, and we've got the distressed edge now. So I'm going to glue him on. I'm not gluing him down with Mod Podge or Matte Medium or anything like that, just ordinary glue will do. 
I'm not going over the top with anything heavy, so this is like the final layer anyway. So it doesn't really need sealing that much. So my robot is going to go on there like that. And I don't mind if the edges curl up because it just adds to it. So we have automaton again. Come on glue, don't let me down. Around the edges, a little bit in the middle. And that's going there as a little bit of a cluster. And on this side, we've got the word robot. Robot. So that will go there. Like so. And I'm going to stick that one like that. So that's that page. And then we've got my trays printed off. Now I've printed this off on sticker paper. So that's going to be easy. Don't need any glue. As you can see, it is quite sticky stuff. So, and that is going to go there. And then we've got the word yesterday. So peel the back off there. And then I've got the word rocket. That was on one of the pieces of the dictionary page that I threw away, well, I was going to throw away, so I decided I was going to add that just underneath the bottom of that word. Oh, I could stick it over the top actually. I think I'll stick it over the top. So we've got the word yesterday there. And then just with a little bit of glue. Dropsy. There we go. Perfect. Like that. Just get rid of that glue. Okay, put the glue away. Just throw the backs of those stickers away. The last thing that I wanted to do was just to add a little bit of colour. So I'm just going to shake up my indigo blue townhouse teal. Uh, that's going to give me a little bit of colour on the lid. And I've got a little brush and I've got my palette. I'm going to add just a little bit up there onto the brush and then I'm going to very very lightly just a little bit of dry brush into the page and it just lifts the colour because you've got all that drab kind of brown so if we add a little bit of this blue into the background it just lifts it helps to kind of blend it all together a little bit.
That'll do. Not going to do any more. And I think that's it. I'm done. Just quickly give it a blast. Okay, so all that blue paint is now dry, so all I have to do now is just to sign and date it. This is the food ball that I've been talking about. I know some of you have asked questions in the comments. That's what it is. OHTO is the company, sold by Ranger. So wherever you can buy distress inks, you should be able to get hold of these pens too. And this is the 1.5 nib. So I'm just going to sign it here and then date it, whatever today's date is, the 19th of February 19, 19 to 19 today. So that's it, that is my future. The future was yesterday, that journal page. Enjoyed doing that, made a change with the structure paste and then doing the drips and the splatters, liked it. Liked it messy and for once I've not got it all over my trousers, which is a big bonus. So that's it for me for today. Hope you enjoyed that if you did please give it a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel like i said at the beginning of the video then you can do so by clicking the button at the end it's all from me for now i'll see you all again real soon bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.